here I am uh, giving you a small introduction on how to help the children get into Tinkercad. Uh, so in order for the children to get in using their Google accounts, um, they're going to click on the sign in button located right here. If it does not say sign in using social provider down here, um, it might say at the bottom of the screen, I already have an account. So when you're on this sign in screen, you don't want to create an account on the last screen. You don't choose. I want to create an account, even though this is your first time getting in uh, just wherever you can select that you already have an account and then choose sign in using social provider right here. Uh, our students here in Clovis Unified have Google accounts, so I would caution the children to come here and click Google. On the next screen that didn't pop up here because I'm already signed in, it might ask the children to click on their names in order to verify those accounts and then they're going to make it in here. When the children first come into this space for the very first time, they're going to see a tutorial space on the left-hand side. Um, it's no longer here because I clicked out of it and then came back in. Um, but Tinker actually walks them through the process of, uh, hey, come over here and then uh, we want you to click on this and then we want you to do step one and we want you to do step two and those sorts of things. Uh, and it begins to teach and train them uh, how to use these resources successfully. And so uh, I recommend that the children go through the process of playing with this software uh, so that they can see the dimensions and uh, how they uh, can be manipulated and uh, how those different resources can work together and they can move around the work plane. Essentially, the work plane is the maximum amount of space that their project can print in or on. Uh, and so you would want to make sure that whatever project needs to be printed is absolutely going to fit into the printer. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, this is where the children have the power to change the name of anything that they are working on. Uh, by clicking on this icon right here, it takes them to the, I don't, I'll call it the main dashboard. Uh, I don't know if there's um, a, another specific term for it, but they would come here. Uh, and then to create a new design, I, I don't, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and I didn't need to say it, but you can create a new design here. If you hover over this space uh, and then click on the gear, you can actually duplicate another project if you need to. Uh, maybe you want to create a copy of it, but you want it to be slightly different. Um, you can duplicate the project, or if you realize, wow, that's not going to work, I, I need to delete it, then you can delete it here. Um, I'm going to click on the Teach button located right here. Uh, from here, I'm going to choose that I am a student, and then I'm going to click the word Apply. Uh, and there are other resources that are available here. Uh, starters define basic 3D functions and link to relevant lessons to develop your skills. So in this one, you want to place something. In this one, you want to view it and then move it and then rotate it. See right down here, it says rotate it. Uh, so, basically, so essentially, the software is um, teaching the children how to use the software. When you click see all starters right here, then new and additional resources show up. Align it, group it, size it up, those sorts of things. Up at the top, you'll notice how it says learn. Inside learn, there are starters, lessons, and projects. If the children click right here where it says lessons, it will take them through the process of learning different facets of how to use this program. They can turn around and click and then see all lessons. You as the teacher, if you want the children to specifically come in and watch a certain lesson, watch the, have the children watch a certain lesson, you're more than welcome to guide them to this information uh, to diversify and expand their skills. Uh, and then maybe the children can collaborate and then you can have um, uh, sort of a, a contest or a quiz, if you will, inside of your class uh, and the children can design something all on a similar theme. When you click the word gallery right here, it takes you to a host of resources that are already to go. 
Uh, these projects can be printed in various 3D printers. Maybe a child would like to make a copy of an existing project, but then turn around and make some modifications to it. Maybe the size, want, maybe the child wants to adjust the size um, or the length of the arm. Like for example, a, a robot, maybe they want to adjust the size. They can click right here and copy and tinker. Now they're not obligated to go through the process of actually printing this entire project, but one possibility is that they just tinker with it. They use the 3D software uh, to make significant adjustments to an existing project, but they have something to work with. So oh, there are different pieces to this robot. Uh, you have the body as well as the two arms uh, uh, and the legs, and maybe um, you want to adjust the length or the width or the diameter or uh, different aspects related to this. And this is a space where the children can come in and make adjustments to an existing project. If your teacher has given you an invitation code, I'm gonna bring you back to this spot, but I wanna teach you how to get there. So I'm gonna click up here on the left where it says Tinkercad, just to kind of get back to my main profile. And then if you click on your picture in either location, so you can click, it's really not your picture, it's your silhouette. If you were to click right here, it would take you to the place where you can um, enter that invitation code. Your other option is clicking here followed by profile. You have two different ways to get to the spot where you can enter that invitation code. And maybe your teacher wrote it on the board or put it in Google Classroom. Over here, where it says enter invitation code, you're gonna click one time. Now, as of January 2019, the invitation codes expire after seven days. So I just want you and your teacher to know it's okay to hand out more than one invitation code for a group of students, but you just need to recognize that it's gonna expire. So once you get that invitation code, uh, make sure that you enter it in uh, exactly the way the teacher has it. Now, over on this left-hand side, obviously you have the opportunity to search. It says search right there. But when you come right down here to lessons, you will locate any lessons that you were previously working on. This keeps rotating as I just slide back and forth. But I can enter this I clicked on it two times. Now I'm going to click right here where it says Tinker This. And when I head in, the tutorial that I mentioned earlier uh, reappears over here. So I can move back to step one uh, where it actually tells me to do something. Learn to move shapes along the work pane. Scoot over to the right and then I scoot down and I scoot up. Uh, it gives me more information. If for some reason you're ever stuck, if there's a skill that's very complex, you can click right here and it will show you a hint on how to move something. Uh, when you click on any one item, uh, it can move from one spot to another. So you click and drag and so this very first skill is very easy. Congratulations, yay, you're awesome, good job. And so I appreciate that there are tutorials that are embedded in here that help the students move along from step to step. When you have successfully gone through the process of completing the entire lesson, behind this box that's in my way, it actually says done or reset. So I'm gonna click where it says done. And when I click done, I can now move on to the next project. You've completed this lesson, now let's move to the next one. So I can click continue. As I move from lesson to lesson, each of the skills are gonna get more and more complex so that I can build my knowledge of how to use these resources. In this lesson, you're gonna learn how to check out your designs by changing your view of the model. So I'm gonna move over. While creating designs, it helps to be able to move your design. So here are the instructions. Just drag anywhere in the view cube and you will see how it changes the point of view. So by using this box right here, I can look at the bottom, I can look at the top, I can scoot all around this project so that I have opportunities to see how it works. Try pressing the top corner until you see who's behind the curtain. So looks like it's supposed to be Elvis. 
continue to the next step. The next step is located right here. Learn to zoom. From time to time, it helps to take a closer look at your design. So practice zooming in and zooming out. If you have a mouse um, control uh, followed by the wheel uh, would be a tool that you can use. Uh, I have a laptop, so I'm holding the control button down. And then I'm taking my middle finger and my ring finger, scooting them together, uh, almost like if you're familiar with sign language, it would be the I love you sign. So those two fingers are kind of down a little bit. And then I'm just sliding those two fingers back and forth so that I'm able to zoom in and zoom out. Zooming in and zooming out, those are very excellent strategies. So press and hold the right mouse button while moving your mouse to practice rotating the view of your design. So I'm holding the right trackpad button down. You could use the right mouse button if you wanted to. And then by sliding around on the trackpad or scooting your mouse around, it's another way to move around. Don't forget, you can scroll the wheel on your mouse, which is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, great job. I'm going to click done. Uh, I'm not going to walk through all these tutorials for you, uh, but I'm just letting you know that all of these training pieces are located over here and available to you. So let's pretend that you get out. How on earth do I get back? I can't remember where I was. Well, the beautiful thing is that all you have to do is click on lessons right here. When you click on lessons, it's going to take you back to right where you had left off. You already completed this lesson, but it's still available to you if you ever need to go back. And then, wow, you've got this lesson that you haven't finished right here.